Hello Nigi fans, I hope that you played your fair share of demos from the Steam Nix Festival last week, where I do have even more titles from there that still have playable demos in this video. Let's begin with Roto Force, a fantastic looking pixel art twin stage shooter that has you sticking to and flipping between the edges of the level. I always think that such rotation in games is an interesting concept and couple that with awesome looking action and you might just have a winner. The narrated trailer for Crowns and Pawns Kingdom of Deceit did win me over and while this adventure game is a genre that I don't usually cover, it does look really well made so enjoy this trailer with some great voice acting and writing. Everything's packed. Don't forget your camera. Right. How else will everyone know that I'm a total tourist? Milda! Hey, hey! Welcome to Lithuania! Hey, come on up! Dude, you won't believe what happened today. What happened? Someone broke into my grandpa's house. Someone broke into his house? Is he okay? No, he's dead. Wait, what? what? No, I mean, he passed away before all this. I came here to sell his house. In the house, grandpa left me a bunch of weird documents, but I've no idea what they mean. Hello? Hand over what I'm asking for, and we will be done with it. And remember, I don't take no for an answer. Do you take screw you for an answer? Cause it's all you're getting. Perhaps we should give these papers to the proper authorities. Uh, I prefer hanging on to these for a little while. I learned that Project Kosche was a KGB project dedicated to finding artifacts with special powers. Special powers? Like magic? Hey, I'm just saying what I found out. So, what's the plan? Uh, I'll just improvise. Old town of Vilnius. Worth a visit. One of the developers that has been in the game for a very long time is Whiskey Barrel Studios, best known for the Swords and Sandals series of Flash games, which are gladiator management titles with turn based combat, with the latest iteration being Swords and Sandals Immortals. The art style has been changed from the previous entries, although the characters do look exaggerated and out of proportion to me, with, interestingly, online multiplayer PvP support which makes it something different. <laughs> Developer Rusty Lake is known for excellent adventure games where The Past Within is their next title and looks to be in a similar vein with their signature spooky twist. Okay, so what do you see? Because I have some kind of device that looks like a computer. Okay, so I'm in a room with some old furniture. Uh, let me see, I've got four paintings, uh, a crow, a house, a butterfly, and a family portrait. What do you see at the bottom left corner? That's the crow. Okay, yes, the ventilator is on. Uh, can you put the timer on for 12.40? Yes. Okay, so I've opened a cabinet and I've got a creepy looking chess piece. Uh, have you got two chess pieces? Hey. Sorry, what did you say? You alright? No worries, um, what can I do? Have you got two chess pieces? I do! I have a chess board. The black one is on f6 and the white one is on a6. Okay, can you move black to a1? Yes. Oh, the white one's moving now. Can you move your white one on e2? Okay, oh, well, this is going well. 
Can you move black to A4? White on E6. Black. I've had my eye on Weird Lens for quite a bit, since I do like the pixel art style of this game, so when it did get a Steam page, I showed it off sometime last year, where it now has a demo, so do check it out. There are spirits that you can recruit to your team, adding a monster taming element with what looks to be an active time battle system like Final Fantasy. But the developer does note the point and click adventure game element as well, making this demo one to play. I mentioned Rogue Command when covering upcoming real-time strategy games a little while back and loved it based on the look alone, since it sure looks like it has Command and Conquer style gameplay but in a Starcraft-like sci-fi world. However, the developers have added modern flourishes, for better or worse, by introducing roguelike run-based gameplay and even a deck-building element, where I am curious about this Although I can also understand people on the other side of the fence who just want a good old fashioned RTS game. It does look fantastic though with an intriguing hook so I cannot wait for the full release. From one sci-fi title to another, Ixion is one of the most gorgeous titles that I've seen in recent memory, being a survival management title where you're guiding a space station onwards in their journey to find a new home for humanity. You have to build and upgrade infrastructure, manage the population on board, explore space, investigate random events and more, with the expected dangers and hazards of space like hull breaches and fires on board. I don't mean to be reductive, but it sure does remind me of Frostpunk in many ways, looking to be quite a challenging one of these. Also of note is that this comes to us from Bulwark Studio, a developer best known for the turn-based tactical RPG Warhammer 40k Mechanicus, which is very good, so I'm interested to see them turn their attention to something different. If you're a fan of factory builders or survival crafting titles, I'm sure that Nova Islands will be of interest, where you play as a new explorer on a planet, having to gather resources, construct buildings and create robots in order to craft better weapons and to defeat bigger and better enemies. If you enjoyed games like Forager, 
Terraria or Crashlands, I'm sure that you will find this to be of interest. I've been looking forward to Koromon for a very long time and hope that it does not get delayed from its release at the end of the month since this high bit pixel art entry does look absolutely amazing and I cannot wait to see all the monster designs in this. It is very similar to Pokemon in many ways, but looks like a fan game in all the right ways, where the developers know and understand what the community wants but Nintendo is unwilling to provide, and what better way to get a feel for this than to check out the demo. Why do they need assassins in heaven? <laughs> to do someone's dirty work. A first person shooter which is very different is Neon White, having, most interestingly, deck building elements where you're swapping between randomly drawn cards on the fly. This title looked very interesting when it was first reviewed and now we have the chance to get hands on. The most interesting part of this game to me is that it comes to us from developer Ben Esposito, who you might know from Donut County, so this is quite a departure which makes it a curiosity taking the number one spot. For more upcoming indie games from the Steam Nix Festival, some of which may still have demos, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.